you can do this even if you don't have great drawing skills. How should you price your artwork? So what if you get a bad reference photo? Here's what to do for this upcoming holiday season because now's the time to get going. Okay, here's a bonus tip. When you get your painting almost done, Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and I want to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects and that is making money. <laughs> yes, I love to make art, but I like to make money with my art too because it gives me so much freedom. And today I'm going to share with you the number one way that I have been able to make extra money as a side hustle over the last 20 years. That's the easiest way to bring in money and find projects that will Hey, you doing what you love creating art and hopefully if you're on my channel you love painting animals so this is a perfect way for you to make a little extra money especially with the holidays coming up you need money people need great gifts it's a win-win and I'm gonna share with you today how I do it and how I've done it over the last 20 years to make it a very successful side hustle sometimes more lucrative than my master's degree level paid job that I used to go to but now I do my art full time, thanks to you all. So I really want to pay you back and say thank you by sharing one of the best ways I've found to make money because I'm so appreciative of all of you. It's all of you who make my little side hustle that I'm doing now, which is teaching watercolor online possible so I don't have to go into a nine to five. So thank you very much. And this is what I want to give back to you. My best tip on how to make money. All right. so. What I'm talking about is pet portraits. That is how I got started in art. If it wasn't for pet portraits, I would not have been able to build my business the way I have. And my main source of income for many, many years has been doing pet portraits. And they still bring in a significant, at least a third of my income every month. And so I wanna to talk to you today about how to find pet portraits and how to make money from them. So. Probably your number one thing that you're thinking right now, if you are kind of new to art, you're not good at drawing, you're not good at painting yet. I really do believe that you can do this even if you can't draw. And I talk about this all the time in all my videos and a lot of people uh, get, they have strong feelings about this, but I have always traced. And very, I learned this skill from professional artists. I know other professional artists who get into national and international shows. That's how they get the image from their photograph onto their, whatever they're painting on, they do a tracing. We professional artists call it a transfer. <laughs> so even if you trace, you're still gonna have to rely on your painting skills. Get over that hump of saying to yourself, I can't do it, I can't draw. Just trace, you can do it. Just trace. <laughs> I talk about it all the time on this channel and there's lots of different apps. In fact, I have a video that I made about a free app you can use to trace photographs and I will link that here. So you can watch that. And by the way, when you click these links that will not take you out of the video, it will just queue it up for you to watch next. Before I had all these fancy apps and camera equipment and all this stuff, I would just print out my picture put it up against a window and do a tracing that way. It doesn't have to be complicated, but you can also use apps these days. There's a camera, camera obscura apps. Look those up too. I've never used them, but they're a great way to get a line drawing started. So there you go. That's, that's how you get over your first hump. Okay. Your second problem might be finding commissions. So how do you do that? Well, the way that I did it is I did a lot of painting of things that I liked of animals. And I just kind of fell into pet portraits. So you have Facebook, you have Instagram. Rely on your current network of people and let them know, hey, now is the time to let me know if you want a pet portrait as a very special gift for Christmas. See, this is the time to start getting those pet portrait commissions lined up. It actually is a little late, but be putting it on your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, start where you are and just let everyone know, hey, I'm doing pet portraits for Christmas. So let me know if you want one. Now is the time to do it. So that's what I would suggest. There is a really great app if you're in a suburban area like me anyway, in most of the United States, there's Nextdoor. A lot of your neighbors are probably on it and I have posted on Nextdoor. Hey, I'm doing pet commissions and I've gotten a lot of interest. And by the way, 
my Patreon is mostly animals and a lot of pet portraits. So if you need help painting animals, you need some tips on how to paint animals, my Patreon is full of animal portraits and soft portraits and all my tricks. And I don't, all the tricks that I use to paint pets accurately, but in a dreamy style, I won't say they're exactly beginner level, but I do have some really good beginner level tutorials. My newest tutorial that is my best tutorial I've ever done of Sam the Tuxedo Cat is my best tutorial ever. And I put a lot of beginner information, what supplies I use and techniques and all kinds of different things that you need to know. I think you can learn pretty much all you need to know just from that one tutorial. It's almost like a course. Everything you need is in that tutorial to get you really started on painting animals accurately. So if you do join my Patreon, message me and say, hey, I'm trying to do pet portraits. Can you put me on the path to righteousness and let me know what you're painting? And I probably have a tutorial about it. If you're interested in painting animals, I have a whole free playlist, my How to Paint Fur series. It's pretty epic and there's so much good information in there about how to paint animals. All right, so those are the two humps is getting over the I can't draw mindset. Uh-uh, don't use that as an excuse. <laughs> and also, I can't find any commissions. Well, you do have to put yourself out there. It is important to start growing your audience. If you don't have an audience, work on growing your audience. Be posting on Instagram and Facebook and like I said, start in your community. Facebook groups can be a good place. They usually don't want you to be soliciting for things that you want to sell on Facebook groups, but say you paint cats or birds or bunnies or whatever, you can go on a bunny group and say, I just thought you all might be, you might all enjoy seeing this painting and not say anything about portraits. And sometimes people will reach out to you that way too. And so that's another way that you can do it. But next door is a really great place to post. Uh, hang some of your paintings in a local coffee shop or a local, I have a grocery store down the street that has local art. Um, think outside the box, where can you put your art, hairdressers. Um, so let's talk about the nuts and bolts about what to do when you have been asked to paint a commission. Where do you start? How should you price your artwork? Well, I like to look at the market and see what other people are offering. So you can go on Etsy and look and search pet portrait and see what is being charged. In the United States, I would recommend if you've been painting for a year or less, ask for a, around 150. Uh, over a year, no less than 200 for an eight by 10 simple background. If you've been painting like five years, I would say you probably have the skills you could ask three or 400. If you've been painting 20 years like me, 800. 800 for an eight by 10, that's my base price uh, for a simple eight by 10. That's usually where I start and I don't get as many commissions that way, of course, but I don't want them. And I could price them cheaper probably and get more commissions. I don't wanna paint that much. I wanna paint for my Patreon students. That's what I love to do. So I'm not as interested in taking commissions. So I do charge a lot and I just do that so that I don't get inundated with pet portraits. I charge a base price for one animal with a simple background. So I charge extra for an extra animal and or a complicated background. So, so say I charge $800 for a basic portrait. If they wanted a second animal in there, I'd probably charge another $300. So around a third-ish of the price added to the price of the final piece is what I charge. Uh, for a more complicated background, I'll charge two or $300 more over the $800 base price. For my soft, dreamy, typical background that I do, that's my base background. If they want trees or they want a house or a lake or whatever in the background, that's almost like adding another animal for the complicated part of painting that just makes the painting harder for you to do. So charge extra for that. They give me a bad reference photo, then I charge more because you have to make up a lot. If they want it done faster, I charge extra. So you've gotten a pet portrait. Now you have an idea of how to price it. Always ask for half down. Ask for half down before you start and let them know it is non-refundable. If they, if you start the painting and you put your time and energy into the painting and they don't like it, and that's only happened twice in my whole 20 years of painting, but if they don't like it, you keep that 
for at least putting all your time and energy into giving it the good old college try. And, and your client has seen your work. They know what style you paint in. They know how um, sophisticated your style is. And they've agreed to pay you this down payment. So you keep that if they pull out of the commission or they don't pay you the rest. I've never had anyone not pay me for the rest of the commission, um, except for two times people have pulled out. They didn't like what I was doing. And so that has happened, but it's really rare. So you always get half down. It's probably good to get everything in writing. I never do that. And then I just let the client know what to expect. And what I do is I have a prepared document that I send out to anyone who reaches out to me. So if you would like that, uh, I will make that available to you free. If you go to rachelstudio.com commission, I will put that downloadable file there for you to download that you can use, you can tweak, use it for your own purposes. But I just talk a lot about what to expect, what kind of reference photo I need. If so, what if you get a bad reference photo? Here's what to do. You go on the internet and you find a similar animal and a similar pose and use that to inform your use of color, shading, um, shadows, background. You can use resources on the internet to help you paint from a bad reference photo. I do that all the time. I've also found that when a client reaches out to me and says, can you paint this picture? Here's fluffy. And it's a bad picture. People don't realize that you need a good reference to work from. They don't understand what a good reference even looks like, which a good reference is usually on eye level with the animal or the cat looking into the camera or at three quarter view not from up above with the animal like this. That's so awkward for a pet portrait commission. No. <laughs> and you want good light. You don't want the picture taken with a flash. So if the client gives you anything like that, say, do you mind if I look through your pictures or do you have a social media account? I can just go look through your pictures and go find a better picture. I do believe I have a video somewhere about how to take good pictures of animals. So I will link that here if I have it. I think the most important skill to learn when you're learning how to do, when you're doing pet portraits is not only your painting skills, but your communication skills. You need to make sure that you're communicating with your client in a way that they can understand. And a lot of times when you are working with a client that doesn't know how the artistic process works, they don't understand that you can only paint from what you see in a reference. So make sure that you communicate with the client about especially eye color and fur color and say, this picture doesn't look exactly, is it accurate? Is this their eye color? Is this their fur color? What kind of background do you want? So you can't over communicate enough. So make sure that you ask those questions before you even start painting so that everyone's clear about what is expected and what the animal actually really looks like. And a lot of times, more often than you would think, they'd be like, he doesn't have green eyes, he's got blue eyes. Well, the reference has green eyes or the color is totally wrong, but you the reference makes it look like they're a brown dog when really they're a yellow dog and it's just a bad shadow as I had that happen too. And people don't understand that you can only paint what you see. So make sure that you explain that to your client. I can only paint what I see. So if you give me a reference of a brown looking dog that's really yellow, I need to know that. So that's also a good thing to do before you start painting. But let the client know your timeline, I give myself three months because I like to paint, think about it, work on something else, come back, let the painting think, sleep on it, come back. So it takes me at least a month to work on a commission because most of the time that I spend is actually letting the painting rest while my brain kind of processes it in the background to think about what the painting needs next. I work that way a lot. So give yourself at least a month to paint something. I give myself three months to get a painting done. If they want it done faster, I charge extra. And then uh, you've got your money, you've got your payment half down. So you get the reference photo and you crop it and you send it to the client and say, do you like this crop? And sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no. Sometimes they'll just let you do whatever you want, which is really great. And so then you can show them other paintings that you've done or other paintings that you're looking at. Like you can kind of get in agreement. Is it okay if I use extra color, play with color, get splashy, or you want it tight and realistic? A lot of uh, people that want a commission want a tight, super realistic, as realistic as you can paint. 
And that's actually an easier way to paint. Realistic, tight painting is easier and a lot of times clients want that. So make sure that you are on the same page about what style they want. And then you, and then you get approval of the crop that you're gonna use. And then you start your painting and usually what I do is I get it about three quarters done and then I send a picture to the client and I say, is there anything that you want changed? Is there anything that looks off? You send them a picture when the painting is three quarters done and say, is there anything you want adjusted? Is there anything that's glaring that you want changed? Uh, I would say half the time they do and half the time they don't. And then you can feel more confident finishing it and getting it done. And then you find them, you send them the final picture. And then if they're happy with the final picture, you can um, get final payment and then ship it off. I have a whole video about how to ship art. I'll link it here. I live in the United States. I've shipped to Dubai. I've shipped to Japan. You can ship anywhere. You just pack it up really good. Um, you should pack it up really well, I should say. <laughs> oh, I just remember bonus tip, ding, ding, ding. Okay, here's a bonus tip. When you get your painting almost done and you feel a little stuck, like, I don't know if this is done. What does it need? I'm painting this for a client. Help me get it right. Join my free Facebook group and post your picture there. And I and many of my very talented members of that group will help you see what you cannot see. It really helps to have an extra pair of eyes. Like when I used to live with my parents and I was painting in my 20s, my mom is an accomplished artist as well. And she would show me her work and I would show her mine and we would help each other see with fresh eyes what the painting needed. That's what my Facebook group does. So I do this all the time as well. When I'm stuck on a painting, I'll post it on a Facebook group, an art Facebook group and ask for help. And it helps so much. So come join my free Facebook group and post your paintings. And if you ask for advice, I do have a rule. We don't give advice unless it's solicited. But if you ask for advice, we will be more than happy to help you improve your painting and also tell you what's really great about it because we're very supportive. It's a great Facebook group, if I do say so myself. They're awesome. And if you join my Patreon, you will get access to a private Facebook group where I post a lot of free reference photos and uh, it's a little bit more private and you'll always get your question answered by me if you are in my private Patreon Facebook group. So those are two more resources that you can rely on. So I hope you will take advantage of them. And then please leave me a comment if I've inspired you to do a pet commission for this upcoming holiday season because now's the time to get going. I love to hear from you about your little painting successes. It makes me very happy. I will be doing a long haired chihuahua next on my Patreon. Um, I haven't started painting it yet, but that's the commission that I need to get started and done like last week. <laughs> so. I've also got a golden retriever that I just need to edit the footage. I'm excited for you if you're thinking about doing this. I hope that you find some success with it. And if you don't, hit me up and ask me for advice because I love to give advice. <laughs> so yeah, that's why. Uh, okay, anyway. All right, well, thank you. And be sure to subscribe if you want to learn not just the how, but the why of watercolor. So you move on your painting journey a lot faster and go watercolor your world. Bye, everybody.